In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today is St. Petalaman's Day. St. Petalaman is a greatly venerated uh, martyr and unmercenary healer. It's kind of rare. You know what an unmercenary healer is? You do not. You don't know. Who knows what an unmercenary Who knows what a healer is? What's a healer? Someone who heals people. Someone who heals people, like a doctor, right? A doctor, right? Unmercenary is a big word. It means you didn't charge money for it. You go to doctors nowadays, they charge you lots of money, right? He didn't charge any money for it. And let me show you in this icon how you can tell that he's an unmercenary Hebrew. Okay, there's St. There's Pantalaemon. And this box is like a box of medicines. He has a spoon, and it's like he has herbs and medicines in this box. That's what is the signal that he's uh, an unmercenary healer. But he's not just an unmercenary healer. He didn't just heal people for free. He also suffered a martyrdom, a really great martyrdom. So he is a great passion bearer and martyr and a mercenary healer. And that's usually we have a saying that's a healer. Or a martyr, not too often both. St. Pantaleon is both. Now, let's see if you can know some other things about this icon. Uh, what does this mean? It means that they're saints. It means that he's a saint, yes. That means that. But what else does it mean? What does it look like? It looks like light, doesn't it? It is light. Where is the light coming from? Um, from their body. From their body. But what is generating the light in their body? God, exactly. Their temples. God, you're right. He's got the question right. How about that? They, they are temples of the Holy Spirit as we are, but they shine the light because they're holy and we are not holy. We're becoming holy. May God grant that we're holy, that we become holy, but we're not holy. Today. So this light is showing that the light's coming from them because they're holy. And there's another thing. The light is connected, always touching their, their, their head. It's never like floating up. There are Western pictures that show a little like it's a little donut, literally, up above a person's head. That's not the way it really is. The light comes from God, which is from within us. God is living in us. It doesn't come from us. We can't generate any kind of light. But that's how you can tell it's the same like this. It's called a nimbus. And usually in iconography, it's this gold flakes, you know. This is actually real gold I'm listening to. This little sheets of gold that they press on. It's very difficult to do, by the way. I've seen it done. It's really hard. This is both super, super, super thin. And it crinkles really easily. And once it crinkles, it's moving. So you have to be really, really careful. So you can tell that he's an uh, unmercenary healer. Now, he's not holding a cross because he doesn't really have a, a hand to do it. But usually when a, an, a saint is holding a cross, it's a sign that he is a martyr. He or she's a martyr. But St. Pendelaman is an unmercenary healer. That is, he can heal people for free. And uh, he's a martyr. Now, let me tell you a little bit of his story. I guess mostly from memory. So he was in agony. Is it good to be a pagan or bad? Bad. What do pagans worship? Idols. But what ultimately are they worshiping? They're worshiping idols. They're worshiping demons. Exactly. They're worshiping demons. And his father worshiped idols. His mother. And um, I don't remember. Did he lose his mother early in his life? I don't remember. Same story. But he uh, was a young man, and he was a doctor, studying to be a doctor, but he was paid. And one time, he, but he, was, he, had no, he was learning something about Christianity, and he had seen a boy who was bitten by a snake, just a five-year-old boy, a little boy, and he was bitten by a snake and, and was dead on the side of the road. So he, his heart went out on this boy. And he knew he had nothing that could cure this boy and raise him from the dead. So he called upon the God of the Christians to heal the boy, and the boy immediately lived. 
and what was from the dead. So Pedelaman then started going to this house of a priest, Ermolas, which was near where he would go to to do his pagan worship and such, but he wanted to be with Hermolas and learn about Christianity. He did that secretly. Now, eventually then, he was baptized by Hermolas, and he started openly healing people, not really with medicines, but by the uh, mercy of God, by his prayers. At the time, he was named Pantelion, Pant Pantelion, Pantelion, which means merciful. And the church has renamed him Pentelaman, meaning all merciful, because he healed so many people. Well, he was found out by uh, the authorities, and the authorities wanted him to worship the demons, and he wouldn't do it. And so he actually went through some very great martyrdoms, very great tortures and such. And uh, I will tell them about to you because I'm hard to hear. Yeah, you don't want to hear me. You wouldn't understand him if you heard it. And when he died, he was beheaded. And it was by a tree, an olive tree, and the olive tree budded. The olive tree budded all of a sudden, just like that. Do trees, do trees get fruit like just like that? No. You can see a little bud, a little flower. It might take a month, two months, three months, four months for there to be fruit. But the, the olive tree went from fruitless to fruit, just like that. So that's something about Pendelaman. He's a great saint. He's very much venerated in the Hermitage of the Holy Cross, which is my favorite monastery. And they like to say they are the largest English-speaking monastery in the universe. They're probably the largest English-speaking monastery literally in the world. And so that includes the universe. And I've been there many, many times. So they're having a great feast right now, uh, probably with several bishops there, and there might be several hundred pilgrims there. Uh, well, next year, hopefully, they'll be having that great feast in the big church that they're building, which we've been, been uh, giving alms for. Um, they're, they're putting the dome there on. They put the dome on yesterday. So they're getting really close to being able to finish the outside building and, of course, then do the inside building. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the gospel, but it's really, really important. One of my favorite gospels, which, you know, which makes everybody know that it's one of about 600 scriptures that I like the best. But I really like this one, and I refer to this one in sermons and personally to people all the time. So I'm going to see if you understand it, okay? So listen carefully. Jesus says, what do you think? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first, and he said, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I won't. But afterward, he repented. He was sorry, and he went. And he came to the second son, and he said, and that son answered and said, I go, sir. But he didn't go. So he said he would go, but he didn't go. So then Jesus asked this question. Which one of them did the will of his father? Which one did? The first one. Which one perfectly did the will of his father? It's a trick question. It's a trick question. Which one? Neither one. But the one when Jesus asked, they said the first one. And he said, you're right. So even though he didn't perfectly do the will of his father, what was wrong about what the first son did? He didn't say he would. In fact, he said, I'm not going. He was disobedient. Any of you ever disobedient to your parents? Hmm? Any of you ever say, I'm not going to do it? Any of you run away from your papa when he's trying to get your diaper changed and you hide and it takes your papa five minutes to find you? Well, I am pretty good. Not, not you guys. There could be a certain someone who does it. Yeah, he thought it was quite funny, and I did not. I was checking to make sure all the doors were still locked, because I couldn't find him for five minutes, and literally I'd seen him ten seconds before say, you've got to come, and I'm going to count. One, two, three, and by that time he was hidden. 
No, he was sitting underneath the, the dining room table, and I was I was looking all over. I was I started to get panicked, and I was thinking, oh, I'm glad that all the doors are open. And I often leave the garage door open, and the, the garage the, the the entrance door to the house does a lot. So you know, keep it locked. So I was terrified, but unfortunately, I could close the garage door. So I knew he wasn't outside, and I searched for him for five minutes, and he thought it was fun, but it wasn't fun. So do you ever do uh, do you ever do things disobedient to your parents? Everybody? Everybody? Okay. Well, but if you do something disobedient to your parents, then you can always repent and you can change, right? Like if your parents say, go clean your room, and I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. Or maybe you don't say it, and you just don't do it, right? But later on, you can do it. Right? According to this parable, you'll do the will of your father, that is God, if you obey your parents, even after you say you disobey. I think that's pretty good news. God treats it as if you were orphans, even though you weren't. That's beautiful news, I think. And so, that's the way to live your life, is obey. But if you don't obey, you can always start to obey, and God will forgive you. I think that's a good thing to remember. I, I've told that 10,000 times at least. I've used that as an illustration. I think it's very, very important. All right. God bless you.